Welcome to Things You Should Know, Civil War Edition. Today we're going to talk about the Battle of Salem Church, located in Spotsylvania County, Virginia, on May 3rd to the 4th, 1863. In an attempt to slow down the Union General Sedgwick's advance, Confederate General Robert E. Lee sent Lafayette McClaws and his troops to Salem Church, meeting up with Brigadier General Cadmus M. Wilcox's brigade, where they began reinforcing the area. Meanwhile, Union General Sedgwick continued toward Salem Church. Initial recon reports indicated only a single brigade of Confederate infantry. Having just cleanly defeated Confederates at Fredericksburg, he detached General William T. H. Brooks's and his division. Brooks hit Wilcox and his men on May 3rd at a small brick church that held Wilcox and his Alabama troops. In a quick battle, the Union troops had pushed McClaw's right flank back, but they weren't able to keep their gains as the Confederates' counterattack pushed the Union troops back to their original position. The end of the day signaled the end of the battle for the moment, and both sides prepared for the next day. During the night, however, Confederate General Lee ordered General Jubal Early to attack Sedgwick's left flank. Meanwhile, Sedgwick got orders from Union General Hooker to retreat across the river if needed. At 7 a.m. on May 4th, General Early and his men slammed into Mary's Heights and obliterated the defenders there. Pivoting to the west, Early continued to push directly into Sedgwick's lines, only stopping due to the horrendous firepower of Sedgwick's troops and artillery. Early was not to be deterred, however, and sent multiple attacks against Sedgwick. Unfortunately for Early, they were not coordinated and resulted in a constant series of small defeats. During this time, Confederate Robert E. Lee and his troops arrived at McClaw's headquarters at Salem Church, where they ordered three brigades of his troops to reinforce McClaw. This was to help McClaw decide to attack. No matter how many attacks either Early or McClaw launched, they were unsuccessful. The night came again, and Union General Sedgwick sent a communication back to General Hooker. There he asked for the 6th Corps to pull back. General Hooker approved, and at 1 a.m. Sedgwick used those pontoon bridges he built before the Second Battle of Fredericksburg to retreat at Banks Ford. General Hooker himself decided that morning after Sedgwick's retreat that he would retreat himself, and the entire Chancellorville campaign ended there with a whimper. The Union Army turned back towards the Union camp at Falmouth. The resulting losses for the Union were 4,611 killed, wounded, or missing, while the Confederates suffered 4,935 killed, wounded, or missing. Join us again next time on Things You Should Know, Civil War Edition.